<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, and yes, Saturday night, and uh, yeah, time to bring you a double feature. Uh, we got, and this is, of course, uh, 13 Wolf Man. Once again, this is the list that I've been working on that he gave me a long time ago, and I'm just kind of chipping away. Uh, we got Candyman and Cemetery Man. Boom, there you go. There's, there's a double feature, there's a double man feature. Uh, <laughs> double man feature. Anyways, uh, let's start off with Candyman, 1992. Uh, the basic premise here is uh, there was a couple of students uh, who are writing a thesis on urban legends. And, of course, there is an urban legend of the Candyman, which, much like Bloody Mary, when you say his name five times in a mirror, he is supposed to come out and cut you up. So, I remember, in all honesty, I know this is where, you know, we're like, oh, really think I'm I did not care for this the first time I watched it. Like, I thought it was okay. The fact that it was, like, considered this horror classic or iconic, you know, movie in horror, I didn't quite see it the first time I watched it. I was just kind of like, like I don't, I don't get the big deal. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't really explain it other than that because when I watched it this time, it's almost like watching it uh, with new eyes on In fact, this is actually, I watched it uh, twice recently because uh, Maya, on her channel, she was reviewing it. And I watched it with her and everything. And like I said, the first time I watched it in a long time, and I was just like, "Wow!" Like this, a lot of this don't even seem like the right, like the same movie. But I mean, it has to be. Cause I mean, I remember it, but once again, it just like I don't know. It was just like, like I said, viewing it with different eyes. I guess I don't know. And so then I was like, "Well, shit, I'm gonna review it here." And I didn't want to just try to like remember what I watched like you know, a month ago. So I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck! I'll just rewatch it again." And yeah, I mean, it, it has gotten better each time I've watched it. Uh, the one thing, this is just going to be a side little note here, this is off the review, but I remember when this came out, um, I was in the second grade, man, I am old as shit, and, um, I remember, my school, my school was way out in the fucking country, right, like, I literally, like, I grew up, like, I didn't grow up in this town, it was, or I mean, I, I, I kind of did, but for the most part, I was on, you know, way in the outskirts, like, you know, like, 20 fucking miles outside of, you know, country or whatever. Uh, outside the town, and uh, anyway, they're just in the you know middle of nowhere. So school's like in the middle of nowhere, and I remember like there was like here's the the playground, and then there's like this massive field. The kids play kickball or baseball or whatever the fuck there. But then there's the woods over here, and like in between the woods and the baseball field, there's this big like storm drain, right? And this movie hits, and I just I never seen it. Like I didn't watch this movie until I was probably in high school or whatever, maybe a little earlier than that, but. Anyway, I just remember that, like, just the power of, you know, myth, I guess. Like, kids were like, you know, Candyman lives down there. And that's Storm Drain. And, like, I was like, that's, that's full, you know, BS. I was calling bullshit on that, you know, even then. But then they're like, no, seriously, you know. You know, my brother, like, the, the kids, like, my older brother told me, like, you know. They said Candyman five times, you know. And boom, it, it happened. Killed him right down there. And of course they're like, I'll dare you go down there. Because I'm, I'm, I'm in second grade, so I was like, well, fuck you, I ain't going down there. And we, it's always what we did. We kept trying to dare each other to go toward the storm drain. And like, none of us was having it. Because as a kid, you know, you'll just about buy it. Like, even though I was like, that sounds like bullshit, I wasn't going to risk it. Because at that point, I have seen enough horror movies to know. You just don't fuck around with that. You don't go near a storm drain in the middle of nowhere. Like, I don't care, you know, how many kids are on the playground. You go, you, you go off that circle a little bit. Like, you get your group of you know, you get your circle of kids here. You wander, you stray, you're fucked. And that's just horror, you know, 101 right there. So, yeah, I wasn't about to tempt that shit. So, I'm sorry, I had to tell you that story because that's just like one of those, like, random, like, Candyman-related, you know, <laughs> childhood stories there. Um, no, watching it, like I said, you know, watching it a couple more times, just, you know, just recently, I really dug it. I liked the idea. Kind of, one thing I didn't like about it was, I don't know, when he, you know, all these people are wind up dead early on. Like, I assumed it was the Candyman, and it wasn't. It was just some, you know, street punk who was taking the legend of the Candyman and making it his own. And, um, I don't know, maybe that was the reason I didn't care for it. Like, I was just like, wow, well, Candyman hadn't really killed anybody in this movie, except, you know, midway through or whatever. Like, maybe the, the early body count didn't count, or whatever the case may be, but, uh, I like that. Like, I, looking back, I like the, the urban setting of the whole thing. And that's one thing I really dug, and I think that's one thing that made turn me off initially when I watched it. Because, you know, even though like, it had this awesome, and I, I will praise this later on probably, but, like, the awesome gothic score, like, the music. And, yet yeah, it's set, like, in the projects, and you're just like, what? Or just in broad daylight anywhere, right? So, I was mean, still like that, I just didn't care for uh, then. Uh, looking at it now, I really dig it. It's very unique. I like the idea that 
you know, it's not just set in a typical suburban, you know, neighborhood like, you know, a Halloween or whatever. Or not set in the woods, you know, like Friday 13th. I mean, it, it's set in projects. Like, and once again, it's like, it's dangerous enough, but now you got like the candy man, you know, kind of stalking your ass. Uh, it's very psychological. I dig that aspect of it. Uh, I like the idea that, you know, what pisses the candy man off is the fact that this girl just doesn't believe him. Like, he's dispelled, he's, she's disproved the whole Candyman thing, she, you know, now everybody kind of knows, like, oh, that one strict punk did it, and the Candyman, who's just kind of a myth at this point, like, there has been no, like, you know, I mean, you assume that he probably had, you know, broke bad before, but it's like, at this point, he's dormant, he's just up here in the air somewhere, and now she has, you know, released him on him, you know, because the fact that she just doesn't believe, and she's trying to prove that he doesn't exist, so now... He's coming down there. Uh, so I really, I, I dug that whole thing. I dug the, uh, and I heard this is actually kind of, this part, excuse me. The Phantom's got a bit of a goatee thing going on here. The mustache is just, uh, it's just the combo thing here. And the thing is hitting my nose, that's ridiculous. I need to trim it up. Um, but like the thing I heard that was based on a true story was, you know, in the one apartment building, how there were, um, you'd have these two, uh, apartments kind of connected by the bathroom and there was like this hollow spot in between the uh, medicine cabinet and I heard that's actually based on like that is like a legit like thing as like a flaw that they built when they you know, built these apartments and people were like sneaking into apartments like through the window or through the uh, bathroom you know cabinet attack you know and I thought that was I don't know, it, it seemed kind of it is kind of messed up because you I mean once again Especially in a bad neighborhood like that, you know, you like yeah, you can bar your windows, lock your doors, but you know, they're coming through the wall, son of a bitch, you know. That's just that's taking to a whole nother level right there. Um, the one thing I like is the fact that it's very, it doesn't sugarcoat anything. Like, and the the one thing I'm talking about is like literally, you know, a woman's killed in her apartment, and she, and it's the same thing that the main girl, I forget her fucking name now. Uh, Virginia Madison, but I can't think of the character's name, but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, when you know, she talked about how like you know, two people died. And, like, the cops don't do shit, but it seems like a white woman's attacked, you know, in a bathroom. Oh, shit. It's a manhunt, and, you know, they bring, they bring down the hammer hard. Um, yeah, dude, that, that's one of the most horrific scenes. Like, I don't know, like, watching it, you know, at this point, because I don't think it bothered me. I don't even remember the scene, to be honest with you, when I was when I was a kid, when I watched it, but, uh, or when I was younger and I watched it. But the scene where, you know, the little boy takes her to uh, the public bathroom, where the Candyman, you know, which is why I was being a street punk, you know, killed, you know, someone else. Like, this retarded kid, like, or, or you know, sorry. Slow. Uh, no, I'm also retarded. I'm sorry. It's not really all that offensive. This retarded kid, you know, in the bathroom, and not just killed him, castrated his ass. Like, fucking cut his dick off. And you're like, son of a bitch. Like, that's fucking... Like, I don't care what the Candyman and, you know, the actual Candyman. I don't care what Tony Todd's character does in this movie. That's still the most sadistic fucking thing in this entire, you know, whatever. Uh, now, I've never seen the two sequels. There are two sequels, I believe. Um, I gotta say, that's gotta be the most horrific thing in the trilogy right there. Like, I'm gonna call it right now. I don't think it will get any worse than that. Is when you cut off a poor, uh, you know, mentally challenged kid's dick in a bathroom. That's just, that's fucking horrific right there. Um, yeah, some crazy stuff. And that's probably one of my, that's my favorite scene right there. It's because it's so messed up and that's so fucking dark and brutal. Um... I, you know, I also like the fact, you know, that um, it's, you know, it keeps making her look more guilty. Like, you know, at one point, you know, she wakes up after the came in first makes his presence known. And she wakes up, you know, in this one, in, in the, I forget her name, but she met her in the projects. Met that one woman, you know, baby's missing, her dog's head's chopped off. And, of course, she, you know, she don't know anything about it. She wakes up in a pool of blood. And, of course, that woman's attacking her. Well, she finally gets the upper hand and kind of meet Cleaver up. And, of course, the cops, you know, the one time they go, you know, investigate, you know, a strange occurrence in, you know, the, the ghetto, boom, she gets caught the meat cleaver covered in blood. And, yeah, you're just like, son of a, like, that's horrible. Like, the, you know, it's that kind of a Hitchcock, like, you know, wrong place, wrong time kind of, you know, thing, you know, man on the run. And it's like, you're like, holy shit, she didn't do nothing. Um, and it happens throughout, you know. Her friend gets, you know, butchered. I'm going to drop some spoilers on both movies, so sorry. But, you know, like, literally she, you know, her friend gets killed in her apartment. Same thing. She's the one that, you know, gets kind of blamed for that. And I, you know, they don't really go into details, but there's a point where uh, the psychiatrist is talking to her. Also gets killed. She makes an escape. Uh, does she kill the girl when she breaks in or does she just knock her unconscious? 
Because in the scene where she gets out of the window, you know, the psychiatrist's window after Candyman, you know, killed him, and she's climbing on the ledge, she gets through the window, and when the girl goes to help her, she just, like, falls on her, but I swear you hear, like, a crunch noise. Like, did she break? I don't know. Either way. So, but I, I like that, because, like, no matter what, like, she was not guilty of anything. And yet, she's, like, you know, they got, like, her, you know, paid for, like, all these numerous murders and everything. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I really dig it. Uh, I, I mean, at this point, you guys have all seen it. There's no way, and I'm willing to bet anything I got on it, that you guys have not seen this movie. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, this is kind of like I watched it for the first time, even though I've seen it before. Uh, there's just a lot of parts I didn't remember about it. Um, I don't know. I, and it was, like I said, it was really like watching it for the first time, and I really dug it. Like, I thought it was just really cool. Um, on top of that, yeah, I, I like Tony Todd. I mean, and I hate this guy. I, I, you know, I met him at Days of Dead. He's a really cool guy. Um, I don't know. I, I, I still don't really consider, like, Candy Man, like, as part of, like, this iconic canon of horror villains. Like, I don't know. Like, to me... I mean, the story's really cool, but it's just like, I don't know. I and I need to see the other two, I guess. And maybe I can finally be like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Candyman definitely deserves his spot in the throne. But I don't know. I still don't play him up there. And I don't really, I don't really think his performance is like all that. Like, I've seen Tony Todd do way better in other movies. But it just seems like in this one, I'm just kind of like, eh, did all right, you know. But, um, yeah. um, I love the way it ends, you know, with, uh, oh, fucking, what's her name? It was you. It was always you. Oh, the name's right there. I can't think of it. Anyways, uh, Virginia Madsen, the main girl. Uh, I just love how she kind of takes the mantle in a way, where she kind of becomes uh, her own urban legend. Uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes. A is uh, the, the end when they're doing the whole like you know, the bonfire. I guess I don't know what you call it or you know, that. But she she going through like a giant, it's like a maze of junk, like this this pile, which you know I wouldn't think would have this much of a labyrinthine kind of pathway through it, but, you know, it does in the, in the movie, so she's kind of going through it, she's now getting away through it, finds the baby, but the can man tries to stop her, she fights out, or at this point now, this part of tradition, I guess, they burn this bonfire, I didn't quite get that, like, you know, was it just like an annual thing, they burned a giant bonfire, was it just because they captured the candy man, because, no, the, 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 the pile was there before, because that little, uh, the little boy, they walked past it on the way to the bathroom, so, yeah, the other candy man wasn't caught yet, so, I don't know, but they're all together, because it's just like a, uh, you know, symbolic burning, I guess, and, I don't know, but, I don't know what the point of it was, but, anyway, they, they're burning it, and, of course, she comes out, fucking engulfed in flames, but the baby's safe, and then she returns the baby back to the mother, and my, one of my favorite, and they just, awesome shot, like, I just love the, 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 the uh, visual, is when they're at the, you know, the, her funeral, and there, you know, there ain't that many people there at all. But then, like everybody, you know, from the projects comes out with the little boy and that woman with her baby in the front. And it's almost like, you know, to me, it seemed like almost like they're like almost paying their respects as long as they know, like, you know, she took care of the Candyman in, in a sense. But then she, you know, at the end, we find out her cheating uh, ex-husband. Because uh, at this point, she's dead, so clearly ex-husband. No need to sign divorce papers there, right? Um, you know, says her name. And I'm, I'm blanking because there, there's a fucking scene. She, he's saying the name. And I feel like he only says it four times. Maybe he does say it five times, but I feel like he only says it four. Anyways, she pops up, you know, behind him in the mirror. And then, of course, fucking, you know, butchers his ass. And, of course, you know, the girlfriend, you know, sees the body and everything. And you're like, well, fuck, now she's going to be stuck with, you know, this murder rep. And then it's just, the cycle keeps going. Uh, I do want to check out the other two now because I feel like, you know, after watching this with fresh eyes... And digging in as much as I did, I, I'm curious to see, you know, what else they did with it. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, check that out. Uh, guys, let me know down below if, you know, if, if the other two are as good, you know, or you know, if I should, you know. I'll probably watch them anyway, so even if you're like, yeah, don't waste your time, I'll be like, yeah, I'll check them out anyways. Christ, I sat through, like, you know, nine Andyville movies, so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I can get through the Candyman trilogy. Uh, but, yeah, no, I really dug it. Once again, uh, that, that score, dude, that score is fucking awesome. Like, I just love the... Uh, the music to this, I just thought it, like I said, just, it, it was definitely out of place, like, it felt like it belonged in another movie altogether, like, it just, like I said, it had this, like, really dark, gothic feel, and there's not really a whole lot of gothic imagery in this movie, I mean, there isn't, it's just, and that's another thing I really liked about it was, I just remember thinking, like, you know, there, there's enough horror movies out there where shit happens just in broad daylight, like, you know, it's always nighttime, it's, you know, I'm wrong, I mean, I get it, that's more atmospheric, I, I you know, I, but I feel like it, when shit happens in broad daylight, 
That's creepy. And do you like, you say, like, you know, he's attacking people in their apartments during the daytime. You know, the psychiatrist gets, you know, his ass whacked in the daytime. And it's like, son of a bitch. Like, you know, that, man, you were, you know, it, 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 this happened, like, so out there. And I remember knowing it was going to happen this time around, but I remember the first time I watched it, Ed part did kind of get me whenever uh, the psychiatrist is sitting there in the chair and then, you know, <laughs> you know, gets taken down from behind. And first, Dude, gay man fucks his ass up with that hook. That's all there is to it. Uh, so yeah, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, I, I really dug it. So, Candyman. Up next, here's a movie that I've always heard about. I didn't really hear much about it, but it seemed like every time I watch anybody's videos and they have like their, you know, their DVD collection, they're like, oh, and Stone Terror Man, really good. You know, check it out, and they move on to the next thing. And I mean, I swear, like everybody, everybody seen this movie. Uh, but yeah, Stone Terror Man, '94, and I believe it was uh, Italian. Um, yeah. Kind of a weird, I just got out watching it actually. It's just kind of, it's, it's a weird fucking movie because when it starts off, you kind of get sense like, okay, I know what kind of movie this is going to be, but as it gets to the end, you're like, what the fuck? And basically the premise is this dude, uh, he's the caretaker of a uh, cemetery, him and this other guy, uh, Nagi. Uh, and basically what it is, uh, whenever the dead arrive and they're buried for like seven days or whatever, they come back as zombies, and then it's his job to fucking take them down. And uh, I'm guessing he was hired by somebody. I guess that's what they said. Like you know, you know, someone knows he's you know he's doing this and he's being paid for. It. Uh, but yeah, so that's the whole. That's it. And once again, like you keep feeling there's gonna be a plot coming around the corner, and the plot never shows up. Like that's pretty much it. Like you're following this guy around. Like early on, you know. Uh, he, he, he sees a girl and he, he falls in love, like hard, falls hard in love. The thing is, she's burying her dead husband, right? So, you know, a little inappropriate, I guess. But anyway, dude, she falls for him, like, instantly. Like, you know, it's one of those things where, man, I instantly, but, like, you know, when she comes back that night, you know, she's, you know, all over them and they're fucking and everything. Well, then a zombie shows up and bites her. And, of course, you know, you know, he's waiting for her. Well, she, you know, wakes up and she comes up, he, you know, shoots her in the head. And you find out later that she wasn't dead right there. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I promise I'm shaving tomorrow. This guy. There we go. Um, yeah, but you know he, he caps her, and so I'm like, well, shit. Like I thought that was gonna be like you know a whole plot there is like him and this girl, but it doesn't. It just moves right along. Like it's just kind of like many episodes of like you know uh, Nagi, which I, I absolutely adore. Nagi. Uh, he's kind of a dim-witted, um, overweight. Doesn't talk at all except for like nah. Yeah, I think that's why they call him Nagi. Um, but yeah, he, he you know you got to. But thing is, he, there's there's a bit of a like you get a glimpse that there, maybe there's more to him than just that because there's a scene where you know because a fucking uh, Francis uh, death. What the hell the French word for or Italian word for death is? I can't remember what the fuck. Just watched it. I'm I'm fan losing his mind already. But anyways, uh, Francis is like you know. I guess he's putting together like this human skull or whatever, and it's very complex and everything. Well, you already see Nagi put it together. He puts it together, and then when he hears him showing up, he kind of takes it apart. And of course, you know, fucking Francis just kind of getting shit. You know, the sometimes he's just like, what are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. You know, it, it's a very complex thing. And then you see him kind of struggle with it. Like, he never quite completes it, you know, as, he, as the, uh, the scene moves on, you know, and you're just like, well, you know, there's definitely more Nagi than they're getting credit for. But uh, this movie uh, has a lot of uh, black comedy to it. Uh, a lot of dark humor just going throughout it. Like, there's a scene where he's on the front, or phone with his friend, and, like, you know, zombies keep popping up after him. He just kind of shoot him nonchalantly. And, of course, he just talked to the, you know, his friend the whole time, taking him down. And I, just, I really dig that, you know, scene right there. Um, you know, there's a scene where, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm dropping spoilers like a motherfucker, but, you know, if you've already seen it and you're good, um, where he gets bitten, you know, because, once again, he realizes now that he killed the girl because she wakes up prematurely anyway, but he didn't think anything of it, and he just takes her down. And then, of course, she does come back. So, you know, you realize she wasn't dead at that point. She was misdiagnosed or whatever the case may be. Uh, and once again, when I get to the end of this movie, it just makes you kind of question everything that's happened in it. Like, it, it is kind of, it takes you into a weird territory altogether. But anyway, when she comes back, she bites him. And it's just fun because he's cleaning himself up, and he's questioning, like, whether, you know, now is he going to turn to a zombie? Because, I mean, you call I mean, they are zombies, I guess, but, you know, they're not the typical, you know, zombies that, you know, we're used to. But so as he's questioning all this, he's just like, you know, for Nagi, you know, he's like, he don't think he'll even have the heart to, you know, bash his skull in, you know, once he changes. And as soon as he turns around, dude, Nagi's ready to fucking take him down. He's like, whoa, hey, hey, you know, haven't changed yet. Uh, I thought that scene was, you know, pretty funny right there. Um, 
so yeah, but the dude, I mean, you get to the point, like, or you get the feeling, like, later on, like, all he wants to be is loved or to find purpose. I don't know. It's one of those two things. Or maybe, you know, love is purpose for this guy, but, like, he quickly gets over the one girl. Like, he's tying over this one girl, losing this girl, and then he meets another girl, a secretary to uh, the new mayor. And that whole scene's, you know, we, you know, I won't go into it, but, you know, because you guys probably are saying it. But, you know, he falls for this girl, which I thought was a very odd thing, because, like, for some reason, and I, I didn't, he, they never explained, or if they did, I missed it, but it's like, he tells everybody in town that he's impotent. And he's not. Like, he's banging the shit out, you know. But, uh, you know, apparently in town, like, they believe, you know, he is. And the secretary hears it, and she's like, you know, are you impotent? He's like, well, no, you, know, you can't believe everything you hear. And before she can finish, she's like, no, I prefer if you was, because, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of erect dongs, I guess. And so he's like, yes, I am. But he goes to the extreme of going to the doctor trying to get cut off, and you're like, wait, what? Like, why would you, you know, well, instead the guy gives him, like, some kind of, like, you know, syringe shot, and, because the guy doesn't want to cut it off, and he goes, listen, this, you know, you'll, you'll, you're going to have, you know, it's going to be, like, you didn't have one for, like, 30-something days, or whatever, but, you know, don't make me cut this thing off, and sure enough, the girl is just like, you know, the mayor raped her, but then the second time they have sex, it was consensual, and then she's like, I'm in love with him now, and I no longer fear throbbing dong. So, like, the guy has his heart broken yet again, and at this point, you're like, well, you know, you were, like, hardcore in love with that first girl, and then you fell for this girl, and then sure enough, like, it's like, uh, he meets another girl later on, and he's wanting to be loved by her, but by this point, he's already kind of slipping into this odd kind of madness, because in between these girls... Uh, he has a nightmare that he goes out on a shooting spree, shooting the town people who are making fun of him for having, you know, a limp dick. And turns out those seven people died, and they spotted his car out there or whatever. And it's very weird because, like, the cops question him, but then, like, I don't know, it's just like, I mean, it's, it's part of the whole thing, I guess. It's just we're in this kind of odd world that they create in this movie because, like, clearly he did it, you know, or clearly they had enough evidence to, you know, make him suspicious. But the cop across is like, eh, he didn't do it. And in fact, there's one scene where, because uh, what happens is he goes to his third girl's house and uh, he turns out she's a prostitute. And he didn't realize she's a prostitute. Like, you know, he's like, she said she loved me and I was going to spend the night. And turns out it wasn't for free. So what he does is, you know, as she's sleeping in the bed, he puts the uh, space heater on the bed and covers it with a blanket. And of course, it catches fire. And of course, it kills everybody in the house. And so. The cops are talking to him, but they're like, no, no, you didn't do it, you know, someone else did it. And I'm not going through the whole, like, plot twist there or anything, but anyways, as he's in the hospital visiting the person who did it, because they get, you know, they're, they're taking credit for his kills, is how he sees it, um, the nurse keeps walking in, like, you can't be smoking in here, and he just shoots her, like, fucking bam, and it's funny in a way, because I, I actually remember laughing, like, holy shit, like, what the fuck? And then someone else walks in, and of course, the, you know, there's a dead body there, and he's like, what are you doing laying down, and... And, of course, you know, sometimes he's like, ah, oh, she's praying. Well, whenever he, you know, says something, he turns around and shoots him. And so he shoots, like, three people in total in this room, right? So as he's walking out, the cops, you know, meets him, like, you know, on the stairway. And the cop's like, oh, man, there's a madman shooting people up on the fourth floor. He goes, oh, good, you have a gun. You can protect yourself. And then he runs away. And you're like, wait, what? Like, are you being for real right now? But, um... Nagi gets a girlfriend. Uh, it's odd. Uh, there's a scene where he he, he he goes all Stan Marsh when he meets a girl and he throws up on him. And he meets this young girl. I mean, she was pretty young. I'd say she's probably like, you know, 16, 17, something like that. And Nagi's just a creepy looking bastard anyways, but, you know, he's so adorable. But anyway, he, he throws up on her and everything. So, uh, anyway, she is killed in this massive, like, mass accident that, you know, killed tons of people. Oh, my God. Sorry, guys. Um... So anyways, um, so yeah, so she comes back, and of course, he takes her head off, I don't, you know, but she's still alive, so she's a talking head, and the head moves around and walks around, shit, it's so, so ridiculous, but, uh, they fall off, they have a relationship, unfortunately, you know, it doesn't last long, because, you know, some terrible man pops her in the head, of course, she was attacking the mayor or whatnot, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I felt really bad for Nagi then, because, I mean, he was already upset when he threw up on the girl in the first place. But then he kind of gets, and you don't know if it's going to work out, and you're like, oh, he's dating ahead. And of course, he's kind of a mentally challenged, overweight, you know, a chuddy. He's, he's doggy. But then, like, he's dating this little, like, Frankenstein head girl. And of course, she's stitched up on I mean, her, you know, her, she's in a horrible accident, which is a gruesome fucking scene when you see the accident. But, anyways, 
you know, but it's like they're making it work. And you're like, all right, happy for Nagi, but yeah, it didn't last long. Um, so yeah, so as the, as the movie gets toward the end, and I can say it, it starts going crazy at this point. You know, he decides like you know, after you know doing this crazy killing spree and everything, he decides like I'm, I'm getting away from the cemetery. And this whole time, like there's you know, he, he appears twice. It's almost like death himself is like you know where are you gonna go or whatever. And he's just like I'm leaving. I'm, I'm done with this. And so him, him and Nagi decide to leave. And what happens is that, you know as they're they leave the town. He's like, I've never been out of town before. And they go through this tunnel. And then, of course, when they get to the end of the tunnel, you realize that's it. There is not, there's a giant cliff that just drops off. There is no other. And he is like, you know, I didn't realize this. You know, there, I knew there was no, nothing outside this, you know, this town. Like, there's no world outside there. And as he, you know, when he gets there, he slams the brakes off. Of course, Nagi smacks his head on the fucking dash. But then Nagi gets out and walks out, and he just, like, falls over. Like, he's a huge fucking gash. And you see, like, the cemetery man literally just, he loses. He's like, oh, my God, you know. And Nagi gets up. Like, after you kind of hear he's dead, he gets up. And then he starts speaking to you, like, I want to go home. To which the cemetery man replies, nah. Which is kind of like what Nagi says. And then... He just cuts to a snow globe with everybody, like with those two guys standing on the, you know, cliff, and then credits. And I was like, what the fuck just happened here? Like, did they do a St. Elseworld, uh, Elsewhere type thing where it's like the whole movie was just someone else's imagination is living inside this snow globe? I don't know. I don't know because there for a second, like before that mind fuck, I was kind of mind fucked at the fact that, you know, Nagi says something. And then Cemetery Man replies back the way Nagi does. Like, do they switch roles then? But then, before I can even process that, because I'm thinking about that, Snow Globe. I'm like, son of a bitch. Like, they, they fucking, they Snow Globe this. They fucking Snow Globe this. So I, I, I'm, I'm still lost. I ain't gonna lie. Like I, and I love that. I love those kind of movies. Like, you know, the trial kind of ends like that. And, you know, you can always piece it together yourself. But I guess it's always open to the interpretation. And I... I'm not gonna lie. I just freshly watched it, so I'm still processing. Like I'm gonna be laying in bed tonight, thinking fucking snow globe and cemetery man. Like you know, is it all fake? Is it all just a fantasy world? Or are they actually living inside the snow globe? Like they're in a little mini world. You know, I don't know. But something about that, I love. Like I fucking love endings like that. Uh, recently, there's a, and I'm going to sidetrack for a second if you guys don't mind. Uh, Enemy, giant fucking spiders. All I'm gonna say, if you've seen Enemy, and I say the words giant fucking spider. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you know what? That mind fucked me for days. I literally spent the entire weekend just thinking, like, what the fuck did I just watch? And I love it. Like, it, it was, like, one of my favorite movies of that year. I think it came out last year. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, I'm sucking that movie off. I love weirdness like that. So this movie, like I said, when I say it ends so weird, that's not me knocking it. I love it. I'm just trying to wrap my brain around what the fuck I just watched. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure you guys have already seen this. There's no way you, you, you haven't. But if you haven't, uh, you, a, if I shouldn't listen to me, ruin it all for you. But if you haven't seen it, you know, I, I, I give you guys a warning. You know, you guys, if you guys are watching my show at this point, if you guys are still watching right now, clearly you know I do the 10-year buffer thing. So, um, and this is past that 10-year buffer, so spoiler alert. Uh, but I highly recommend it. Like I said, I, I, I thought it was just, it was very, it was very unique. Uh, you know, even to the point, like, you know, when it's snowing on them, because, you know, it's in a snow globe. It, it, even it, like, you can tell, like, it was clear, like, an animated type snow, but it just looked so cool, like, it, it, it was just part of the style of it, I don't know, like, I didn't, I couldn't criticize it for that, I thought, it looked, I thought it looked cool, I thought it looked really neat, um, so yeah, I, I really dug it, it's actually on YouTube, uh, check it out, uh, I'm cut too, like, it, you know, there's titties, you know, off and on throughout the movie, and it shows it off and on throughout the movie, so, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's here on YouTube, I don't know how long, it happens a lot, a lot of times, you know, I'll watch a movie on here, and then, after I review it, I go back to see if I can see it again or something like that, and it's gone. It's banned or whatever, so jump on while you can. Uh, but, yeah, no, uh, yeah, both, you know, a, a, an excellent double feature tonight. Uh, I'm really digging that. So, uh, Candyman, Cemetery Man, check them both out. So, all right, guys, you know, you got any, uh, you guys want to talk about these movies? Drop you know, some comments down below or hit me more on Facebook. Uh, like I said, uh, both is really good stuff. Like I said, I, 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 I'm definitely digging the ending of uh, Cemetery Man. So, all right, uh, and the music. I really dig the music. And um, there's a, uh, yeah, uh, no, yeah. Anyway, just, yeah, both of them just solid movies. So I'm gonna wrap this up. We're getting a little long. We're getting a little long-winded here. All right, movie fan out.